Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this tutorial I wanted to show you how to make a room really pop by doing a TV replacement and also putting some fire in the fireplace. Now I'm going to show you just a plain old room. It was shot with kind of a neat uh, perspective, for a kind of neat uh, point of view, but it really didn't still make it pop. I'm going to show you a few different things along the way with it though. I'm going to do the typical flambient. I'm going to also show you a window pull that I did. I'm going to bring that all together so that it really starts making that room pop, but then to add that little extra punch to it and it really doesn't take that long to do is how am I going to replace something in the TV so it doesn't look so bland it actually looks like a good centerpiece to the room and also the fireplace it was during the summer in Southern California very warm didn't want to turn on the fireplace and a lot of times it's just too much hassle um, if you're doing real estate photography you know you're out and somebody might not have the key to turn on the gas you don't want to take liability for it well now Photoshop has some real easy stuff to render some flames inside there and I'll show you what I do um, to kind of make that happen to make it also blend in to make it look natural. So let's take a look at everything it takes from start to finish to get this room to pop with doing a TV replacement, flambient, and also adding some fire in the fireplace. So this is the room that we have, and it wasn't a very large room. It was actually a very nice little place, um, and it was a kind of a neat uh, point of view. I tried to show from the uh, a person sitting here what that would look like. Now what I've already done is I've applied some of the other similar settings I would have already done in Lightroom and brought the layers into Photoshop. So what we have here is this was an ambient layer, uh, just an ambient shot. You can see that's why the windows are so blown out. Over here then we have the uh, the flash shot, and you can see it's very flashy. All that I did on this one, just as I was running through the, the downstairs of the house, I used my uh, Rove light, and it's very powerful. Uh, adds shows a lot of light in the room. It was way behind me. You can see it added some very harsh shadows because of it, but I knew I'd be doing this flambient, so I just went ahead and popped that guy in there and let him go. The other thing that I did was I did a window pull. So this is just the flash that was at about full power, and I shot this probably about 1 60th of a second at about ISO 100, so I could really get a nice window pull. That's an overexposed window frame, and I've shown that uh, in other uh, videos as well. You can take a look in uh, earlier in this uh, series. And uh, so, but anyways, those are going to be the base layers that we're going to do. But as you can see, that no matter what we do, we've got uh, kind of a nasty looking television here. There's no matter what we do, there's some reflection that's still in there. I could add a black gradient maybe in there and, and make it look natural. But there's a lot of reflections. I really like to make that pop. This fireplace down here, it was summertime. I really didn't want to light the fire, and it's a wood fireplace too. It had been a hassle. I've got to burn through this room, uh, no pun intended, in just a couple of minutes. So it's a little too much work to actually have that done. So I'm going to add that in also. So I'm going to show you everything it takes to do that. So I've already aligned the layers. You've seen me do that as well with one of my uh, presets in my presets in action uh, tutorial. You can see how I do that. I'm going to change this though, this uh, ambient layer here, we'll just la uh, label him, I don't have to do that, but just so we can keep track of that, he's ambient, you can see down here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this ambient layer, and I'm going to change his mode to luminosity. Now this is, you've seen me do this before on other uh, tutorials, by doing luminosity we don't lose the color aspect from what's underneath of it, it only changes the light direction. We can see that that luminosity is going to be taking away that shadow that would be up here. So we're going to see that shadow go away as we paint that in. So what do I do? I go Alt L for layer mask, hit uh, M, excuse me that was Alt L for layer, M for mask, and I'm going to go ahead and hide all. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select my brush tool. I'm going to change that flow down to about 8%. Some of this may be redundant. You've seen me do this in other videos as well. So now that I've got this low flow brush tool, I'm going to increase his size. And I'm going to start painting in very slowly where I want some of this. You can see it coming in real nice. See that shadow's going away. And I'm able to fill in some of that light that's missing. And I don't care about the ambient coming here on the window, because I'm going to be getting rid of that with the, uh, with the window pull. So I'm going to get some of that in. And we can already see this is starting to look a little better. So we've got some more light coming in there. That's great. Get some nice across here. I love to see the light come in, and I know some people don't like to shine on the floor. I actually do in a lot of cases, as long as it's not too blown out. But it gives it a natural look, natural feel of what's going on there. This also has light coming into it, so I'm doing that. This should be a, also a different shade of light coming in. Of course, it should be dark behind the couch. So I'm going to probably crop a lot of that out. So I've got some of that going in there, but just enough to make it look natural, not, not anything too bizarre. Let me get rid of some more of that shadow over here. So that, that to me looks fairly well. Might add a little bit more in from that lamp. 
Uh, over here, uh, that shouldn't be showing up from the flash. It should look like the light actually came in and hit it. So that's looking pretty good. Now if we were to go over here and shift click on this uh, mask, we'd see if I didn't mask it, some of it in, this is what it would look like. So we only put just a little bit, but that's enough to make it look a lot more natural. So that's not too bad. I could spend more time on it possibly. But I'm starting to really like just the way that it looks with this. One of the things I like too is center pieces. So this chest piece being the center piece, I want to show this as kind of a game room. And I want to be able to tell a story of, yes, you're in this game room. This is nice and natural. You're going to have a fire going on and something really nice going on the television set. Had a little bit more up here on that fan shadow. I notice I'm going to get rid of that and lighten this corner just a little bit, sunlight coming in there. So that would be fine. Once again, you can spend a lot of time on this depending on how much uh, profit you want to make with how much time you're going to actually spend doing this and what you're able to charge for your, your customers to do that. So for standard MLS photos, might not take that much of time. Something for a builder or if I'm doing one-off type stuff, then it might be a little bit different. So we've got that looking good. Okay, next one is the window pull. We're going to change that guy's mode to darken. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and layer mask hide. I'm going to zoom in on that window so we can get a little close and see what's going on. By the way, you, you pull your, uh, your uh, press your space bar. I've got my brush selected, but if you press your space bar, you get the hand tool. You can move it around real quick. So another reason I like using the, uh, the tablet with one hand and my hands on the keyboard on the other. Anyways, we'll select that brush tool. This time we'll up that opacity to 100%. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller and let's just go ahead and get those windows in. But da boom. I'm not the first guy that's ever done this. You've seen a lot of other videos done by people. Uh, Rich Baum, B-A-U-M, he's got some great videos on doing this. I think uh, Wayne Capilli too in the uh, Real Estate Photography Group um, on uh, Facebook. He's, uh, he uses this quite a bit too. It's great technique uh, to use to, to get some natural uh, looking light coming in from outside. Some people say that's a little too much. That doesn't look quite natural. Well, let's zoom out and take a look and see what that actually looks like. So if we go, that's eh, not too bad. I don't mind that. It is a little bit dark though down here. So let's just grab the eraser tool and let's use a low flow on the eraser. We'll also use about 8% flow. Make them a little bit big. I'm just going to go across this real quick. And boom, just erase a little bit of that from the bottom. There, now that's not so bad. Okay, so we've got in th that in there, and at this point, typically, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd flatten all the layers and I'd bring it back into Lightroom, but in this case, I'm not going to. I'm still not done. This is where we want to do our TV replacement and our flames. So now cutting to the chase, let's take a look at what we're going to do. Now, I want to put in a nice scene. I think this is a nice scene because it's a picture that I took with one of my 20, uh, new 20 millimeter lens that I got here a few weeks ago. So this is where we had some, before the rains came, we had a nice cloudy day, some nice sun flare from that 20 millimeter. I was shooting about F14, I think it was. Here's our bony mountain in the background, nice path going to it. I'm not too worried about this right now. Normally I would take that out, but since this is just for an example, uh, I will just take this guy and put him in as is. So, for what I do, this is ViewNX. It's a software by Nikon, OEM software. You've seen me use this also in other uh, tutorials I've shown where instead of using Lightroom uh, to get around some of the, the problems with it, uh, not knowing exactly the raw file interpretation, I use some Nikon products sometimes. Anyways, uh, for this case, especially doing landscapes, I did use that. I'm just going to take and drag this guy right over top of that picture I'm working on. Now what it did, it automatically added that as a new layer, and it's allowing me to resize it. So I'm going to go ahead and shift and click on that corner. I'm going to bring the size down to just about where it's about the size of that TV. I'm going to change the opacity now so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm doing, by the way, control plus. That way I'm able to use the keyboard and not have to worry about what the mouse is doing because I'm using the mouse here to do this type of stuff. And I can see that, hey, that looks, that looks pretty good. I can also see that it's probably the same perspective as the TV, probably about the same ratio. So I'm going to show you what I would do with or without that. So let's make it a little bit bigger and let's go ahead and fit that in there. Now, now that it's that size, there's a couple things I could do. Uh, let's zoom in a little closer so you can get a really good look. Now one of the things I could do, I'm leaving the opacity low for now just so we see what's going on. I go uh, to Alt-E and I can go to Transform and I can go to Distort. 
and I could go ahead and distort this thing where I line up each one of these corners on the corner where the television screen is. And that's great. I could definitely do that. But I want to cut out some of the bottom on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up. I'm distorting these to where there's actually some overhang. This is also going to get rid of my logo on the bottom. So line this up as much as I can. That's going to match up and it's going to make it look like it actually fits. And that looks like perspective wise we're lined up uh, natural as it would be. I'm following it by using these lines as a guide. And once again, I could take this corner, I could put it all the way up here and say, ah, we're done. Let's just go ahead and put it in there. But I'm going to do it a little bit more and do it by a mask and cut some of this off so we got more sky in there. Maybe we'll just take this up just a tad right about there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like that. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to add a layer mask to that. I'm going to go layer, mask, reveal all. I'm going to grab my polygon tool up here. And I'm just going to use the polygon lasso tool, not the magnetic one. And I can see where the line is for the TV. It's right about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a polygon line from there over to the other side. I don't care where I go in the bottom because this is going to be used to erase it. I select that, go over to that mask, hit the delete key, he's gone. Now I can take that layer and bump it up 100%. Okay, so now that TV replacement's there, but it's not going to look completely natural. To make it look more natural, you kind of want to bump down the fill just a little bit. You could bump down the opacity, but in this case, it's really fill that's filling that area. So it gives it just a little bit more punch. Transparency is going to see everything through the back. Fill has just a slightly different effect. Very similar, but slightly different. In cases like this, I do like to take that out. I can still see a little bit of that lamp in the background, though, so I'm not completely happy with that fill. I'm going to actually take that fill up a little bit higher to about 96. Not quite 100 percent, but just enough to kind of take that down. So let's take a look, see how that looks. That's not too bad. So without the TV replacement, with the TV replacement. I definitely like it. I'm biased though. That's one of my pictures. So now the next step. I want to add these flames in down here. This is going to be a tricky one too because this fireplace has these posts in the front. And that's a real pain what we're going to be doing. But I'm going to show you how to work around all that. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer. And to do that, I just go Alt L which brings up the layer menu, N for new, and hit layer. And I'll just call this flames, FLM, boom. Don't even have to name it anything because this isn't going to last very long. This is a temporary thing. The next thing is to grab your pen tool. And that's this guy right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some, like a little bit of a zigzag where those flames should be. So I can see where the wood is. So let's go ahead and just start one here. We don't have to be exact yet because I'm going to do some other funny stuff here. So let's go ahead and do bop, bop. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, that's probably pretty good. And you'll see why in a second. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go filter, I'm going to go render, and then flame. Now I get this dialog box that shows me just about how the flames would look. Um, I can change all kinds of stuff, the length of the flames, the height of it, and quite honestly, at this point, I'm really not too worried about that. What I want to see is kind of the interval of the flames. Um, I want to make it look natural, so I'm going to play with that till I see it look fairly natural. The width of the flames, maybe narrow that a little bit. No, I liked them wider, but you can do these adjustments here and you can kind of get where you like the flames. The angle, I do want it straight up, otherwise they'd be blowing over and we don't want to catch the house on fire. So we're just going to do that. I could also randomize length if I wanted to. Eh, I don't like that either. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to set it in like that. Now this isn't going to look perfect. It's going to be a little bit off. Eh, it's not too bad. But I need to now, I want to work with that as a regular layer, but look that I still have the pen thing going on. It's because I have to transform the shape. So all I'm going to do up here is I'm going to hit this little shape button. I do that. It made the shape, made a shape layer, and I can get rid of it. I'm just going to hit delete, done. Now I've got this flame layer. Now I can do all kinds of stuff with it. Now I can go uh, edit, transform, distort. Now I can say, you know what, I kind of want to put that a little bit over here, maybe down here just a little bit. So I can play around with this as much as I want to, moving it where I want to, kind of bending it in place. You can see where I'm already starting to get the problem with that post right there. So let's say that we want to put it here, and that's, that's probably good. It's over the wood. It's not looking too bad. Okay. Now the first thing is, once again, we're going to go back to our fill adjustment. I like this because this is behind a screen, and it's going to fill beyond that screen just a little bit. Now we start seeing that screen starting to pop through there. That's starting to look a little more natural. But we're going to make it look even more natural. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here. 
I'm going to turn off this layer for just a second, and I'm going to try to select this post. So I'm going to go in here to my base layer, and then I'm going to select the quick selection tool, and I'm going to go here and try to select this post as best I can. Did it select it? It's kind of trying to. That's not too bad. Good, it's selecting it, and I'm clicking each time on here. You can probably hear my clicks through my microphone here. That's not too bad. So I've, I've got those uh, kind of quick selections going on here with that. It's a little bit rough. We can clean it up later. But now what I'd like to do is feather that off a little bit. So I'm going to go Select, Modify, Feather, and I'm going to feather it, let's say, with just one pixel. That should be good enough. Now let's go back up here to the flames. Let's add a layer mask. Layer, mask, reveal. And now on the mask, I hit the delete key and boom. Now we got that post cleared up. So when we look at it one to one, that's not too bad. I could go in and clean that up a little bit more, but I'm gonna clean up the flames anyways. Let's go back and zoom in a little bit closer. And what I'd like to do with the flames, I'm gonna select my eraser tool. I've still got that low opacity. I'm gonna bring that brush down I'm going to start making this more realistic. I'm just starting to erase right here. And using this tablet that I, that I use, you've seen me use this Wacom tablet, it gives me a lot of control as though we're sitting here painting. And trust me, when you got some cool music going on, you feel like a real artist here. I'm, I couldn't even draw flies, but in Photoshop, I feel like a master. So I've got that going on. Now I'm blending that in there. Now I can also blend a little bit, a little bit too much there, just around this post. So I might just go pop, 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 pop. So he looks a little bit more natural, and I'm fading that flame a little bit. Okay, so that blended it even more. So a little bit of blend right there. Okay, now let's go back and view it at full size. Now we got some natural looking flames going on there. I could now maybe increase the fill a little bit on that, see if that looks a little bit more natural to where I like it. Okay, that's good. Now, what I'm going to do is save this as a PSD file. So I'm going to save this. That way I can go back to it later. There's a lot of layers here, and I might need to go back to it. So I'm going to go with this one and call it just tutorial. Dash toot. Boom. Tutorial. Okay, so it's going to go like that. After it's done saving, it's going to go back into Lightroom. And that's where then I can uh, make my final adjustments. And of course, you've seen me do that in a lot of other videos. And this has taken a long while to save because for one thing, I brought in some very large files. I brought in that sky. Um, these three files here were uh, originals from RAW, so they're very large too, and I'm shooting at full frame. So that's also why too, I don't want to have to do this again. Save it as a Photoshop file. Now that it's saved, I go back into Lightroom, and it's awesome automatically loaded. You've seen me do this before. I'm in the develop mode over here and all that I hit is RE full bump and boom. Look at that. Beautiful looking. We got a lot of punch. We're not done yet though. We're really going to make this pop. Let's bring this down just a little bit in size. We don't need to show all that wall. We don't need all that ceiling. So let's take it down a little bit. Maybe darken this just a little bit here by, by taking some of that out. That's not looking too bad. Okay, and there we have our photo. Now I could still go in and do a few more touch-ups and whatnot. In fact, I could take the highlights up a little bit if I want. The shadows have almost been taken out, but we'll add just a little bit more shadow in there with our shadow slider, and that's not really looking too bad. Okay, now I could also take a little bit more contrast into it, brighten things up a little bit, but this is more of a subdued picture. We've got some flames going on in here, even though we've got a bright sky on the TV, and we've got quite, quite a bit of daylight showing out there. So one of my last little tricks I would do for a room like this, since we want to add some ambiance, we've got this type of a curvature going here, let's add a vignette in there. Let's just go ahead and darken that vignette just a, a tad, ever so much. And boom, we've got this nice little vignette going on. We've got some nice ambiance going on in the room. And that's probably a good enough picture to go ahead and deliver. Let's do it. File, export, and we're going to go ahead and export as that as toot. And just to show here. So as we export that out, once it's done and that file is saved, it looks like this. I realize that was a long and drawn out explanation of how to do just a TV replacement and also adding some flames to your fireplace. But as you start working on this, you do get the time down quite a bit. A shot like that typically would take maybe about three, five minutes to process everything, doing flambient and adding all that stuff. And that may seem like a lot of time and it could even take longer if you really want to make it pop. But for me, it's not just an investment for that particular job, it's an investment for the future. If I show that I can make these pictures pop for that agent, I'm going to get referred for the bigger jobs. 
and also not just for that agent but from other agents. If you can show what you can do, you're going to get the gigs that pay for it. So anyways, I add a little bit of time to, to doing stuff like this for my clients. Um, it does pay off and you do get referred to other jobs. You get a lot of other work because you can show what you do and you find a happy medium. For this, you can take a little less time. This was just for a simple MLS listing for kind of an average house. It wasn't anything that was uh, going to be a, a high-end job, but I knew that this agent also has other high-end work and I appreciate that. So a little extra for them, they love the look of it and then for me it's that added investment in the future. Think of it as a marketing expense to help you get other gigs. Anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope it's very helpful and you'll be able to use some of these techniques. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care and get out there and shoot something.